Chapter 8 The power of imagination morning in a hundred acre wood came quietly, with the first rays of sunshine peeking through the tall trees, casting golden beams on the dewy grass. Birds chirped happily in the branches, and the sweet scent of wild flowers filled the air. Christopher Robin stood with Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, Eeyore, and Rabbit, feeling the warmth of the morning and the soft breeze that seemed to carry a hint of adventure. Christopher took a deep breath and smiled. It's a perfect day for an adventure, don't you think? Tigger immediately bounced up, his tail springing beneath him. Adventure? Did somebody say adventure? That's what Tiggers do best. Piglet looked up nervously, tugging on the corner of his scarf. Oh, dear. What kind of adventure? Pooh scratched his head thoughtfully. I think an adventure sounds just right, especially if it includes finding some honey. Christopher laughed softly, looking at his friends with affection. Well, we can make this adventure anything we want. After all, we're in the Hundred Acre Wood, where anything is possible. Christopher's words sparked something inside him, a feeling he hadn't had in a long time. The Hundred Acre Wood wasn't just a place to visit. It was a place where imagination ruled, where anything could happen if you only believed. He had forgotten how magical it could be. But now, surrounded by his friends, the feeling of endless possibility washed over him. Pooh waddled closer to Christopher, tilting his head. What kind of adventure do you think we should have, Christopher Robin? Christopher knelt down, his eyes sparkling with excitement. What if we pretend this forest is full of hidden kingdoms and enchanted places? We could be explorers or knights or anything we want. Tigger bounced even higher, his eyes wide with enthusiasm. Knights. Oh, I'd be the bounciest knight in all the land. Piglet blinked nervously, but there was a flicker of excitement in his tiny eyes. And maybe, maybe I could be a brave explorer, even if I'm small. Pooh clapped his paws together, a broad smile spreading across his face. I think I shall be the royal honey taster. Someone needs to make sure all the honey in the kingdom is good enough for eating. Christopher's heart swelled with joy. This was what he had been missing, this sense of wonder, of imagination, of turning the ordinary into something extraordinary. He stood up looking around at his friends. Then let's begin, Christopher said, his voice full of excitement. Let's make this forest our kingdom. And with that, the hundred acre would transformed before their eyes. The tall trees became towering castles, their leaves shimmering like golden banners in the wind. The soft grass turned into a lush kingdom, filled with hidden treasures and secret paths just waiting to be discovered. In their minds, Christopher and his friends were no longer just wandering through the woods. They were on a grand adventure, filled with knights, castles, and enchanted forests. Tigger, now the Knight of Bounce, leaped from tree to tree, his tail propelling him high into the air. Watch out, enemies of the kingdom. Sir Tigger is here to defend the realm. Piglet, armed with an imaginary map, led the way as the brave explorer. I think the hidden kingdom is this way, he said, pointing to a path that twisted deeper into the trees. But be careful, there could be dragons. Eeyore, who had taken his place as the kingdom's royal advisor, plodded along behind them, his tail drooping as always. Well, I suppose it's nice to be a part of an adventure, even if it's probably going to rain. Rabbit, ever the planner, was busy organizing the kingdom's gardens, making sure everything was neat and tidy. A kingdom without order is no kingdom at all, he declared, waving a stick like a scepter. And Pooh? Pooh had found a hidden treasure, the largest honey pot in all the land, and he was quite content making sure it was just right for the royal feast. Christopher watched them all, his heart light and his spirit full of wonder. For the first time in years, he wasn't thinking about work or meetings or the weight of responsibilities. He was fully present, lost in the magic of the moment, where imagination ruled and anything was possible. As they wandered deeper into the woods, the adventure grew even grander. They crossed over streams that became mighty rivers, leapt over fallen logs that turned into enchanted bridges, and whispered to animals that could have been talking rabbits or wise old owls in disguise. Suddenly, Piglet gasped, pointing ahead. Look, 
a dragon. Everyone turned to where Piglet was pointing, their eyes wide with excitement. Of course, there was no dragon, just a tall, twisting tree with branches that looked a little like wings. But in their minds, it was a mighty, friendly dragon, waiting for them to approach. Tigger, ever fearless, bounced up to the dragon and puffed out his chest. Don't worry, everyone. Sir Tigger will talk to the dragon. He stood tall, as if addressing the majestic creature. Good dragon, we come in peace. We want to be friends and have a feast with you in our kingdom. The dragon swayed slightly in the wind, its branches creaking as if it were considering the offer. Pooh waddled over, licking a bit of honey from his paw. If you like honey, we have plenty. That's the best way to make friends, after all. Christopher couldn't help but laugh. It was a beautiful, magical moment, filled with the innocence and imagination that only the Hundred Acre would could offer. As the day wore on and the sun began to dip lower in the sky, the adventure slowly came to an end. The castles faded back into trees, the rivers turned into streams, and the enchanted bridges became simple logs once again. But the magic of the day lingered in the air, wrapping them in warmth and happiness. Christopher sat down on a soft patch of grass, his friends gathering around him. They were tired but happy, their hearts full of the joy of the day's adventure. That, Christopher said with a smile, was the best adventure we've had in a long time. Pooh nodded, his belly full of honey. Yes, I quite agree, Christopher Robin. And the best part is, we can do it again tomorrow. Tigger bounced lightly, his tail swishing behind him. And every day after that, Piglet snuggled close to Christopher, his eyes sleepy but content. We'll always have adventures together, won't we, Christopher Robin? Christopher looked around at his friends, feeling the love and connection between them. Yes, Piglet, we'll always have adventures. No matter where life takes me, I'll always come back to the Hundred Acre Wood, and we'll imagine new worlds, new kingdoms, and new adventures together. As the stars began to twinkle above and the forest grew quiet with the promise of night, Christopher knew that the magic of the Hundred Acre Wood would never leave him. It wasn't just a place he could visit, it was a part of him, woven into his heart. Because in the Hundred Acre Wood, with the power of imagination, anything was possible.